<laughs> before I was ready. So let's pop. Sorry about this. I didn't mean to go live immediately. Let's pop this in the hole. Okay. Um, the weird thing I was just looking at is that the time of the live was set to 1 a.m. Uh, in January 1970. So I'm not sure if I set this up properly. Hey, Tracy. Uh, yeah, it, I was I was set to go live back. So this is a this is an episode of Back to the Future. But anyway, I'm here now. Uh, the angle's a bit weird. It's, it's rickety old thing. Uh, here we go. And Scotty Bean is here as well. Hello, Scott. Let's just, do we need some more light? I don't know, that's too much, it's gonna give me a headache. I was gonna put a microphone in, so I'm gonna do that now, bear with. Yeah, I have um, prematurely gone live before I was ready, so sorry about this, just. Ooh. Just pop in the microphone in, here we go. Should give a slightly better sound. There we are. Right, we are ready. So I don't know why I can't see. Can't see the video on my laptop. Maybe it's because it's set to 1970. How random! Did anyone get a notification on YouTube for this live stream? I would be very curious to know. I have a feeling probably not. Hey, JC, good to see you. And. Yeah, let me know. But anyhow, we're here now. I did advertise it on Instagram. Oh, you did? Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Scott and Tracy. Oh, that's good then. It's <laughs> so random. So random that it says live not in January 1970 at 1am. Very, very strange. But yeah, I did have a weird thing when I was setting the live uh, up earlier, actually. Is I put the photo in, the thumbnail, and then it switched it to the uh, to just a channel um, picture of um, you know my channel uh, art or whatever you call it picture of sweetie <laughs> so it was kind of strange. Hey Christy, good to see you. Um, getting a bit warm already. I've got a window open. Problem is this moth weather, and I can't bear them moths coming in. Um, Christy's here as well, um, sparkly sweater, pretty thank you, <laughs> just had to cover up the fat arms, <laughs> otherwise I'd, um, I wouldn't be wearing it because I'm a bit too hot, <laughs> but I hate, I hate looking at videos and photos of myself in sleeveless tops like this because, um, yeah, I, w I would like to be a little slimmer, shall we say. Um, JC says, you are beautiful and gorgeous. Well, that is so sweet. Thank you very much. And Jackie's here. The lovely Jackie, we've missed you. I uh, hope you're well. And uh, let's start with a drink. I might have to open this back door. Yeah, um, I'm going to open the back door because otherwise I'm going to start sweating. And then I might just have to get my flabby arms out anyway. Right, bear with me. Oh. It's a door that requires shifting a bit. Hang on. There we go. Right. If moths come in, it will be entertainment for you lot. You've seen it before. Uh, Scott certainly has. I know a lot of you guys, um, my regular, my leg regular friends, have seen uh, a, a moth reaction. So she's not really ready for moths. I don't think moths shouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not exactly afraid of them, but they, they do make me scream, so I don't know. I know logically they're harmless, and I don't mind them when they're flat and they're still, but they're just so erratic. It's just, they're, they're mental. Um, who likes moths? <laughs> let's, start, let's start the evening off with a moth question. Who likes moths um, and who doesn't? Drink of the night, first one of the night is a vodka and Diet Coke. I just had 
made a danzak before. It's my favourite dish in an Indian restaurant. I love hot and sweet, hot, sour and sweet all together in one go. And I love the thickness of the sauce that comes from the soft lentils. So it's my favourite dish and I thought, I found out lentils are quite healthy and high-ish high in protein now. That was something like that. They've got, um, they've got benefits. Um, so I thought I would try and make my own chicken danzak much. So um, this recipe is supposed to taste like a danzak, but it's not a traditional recipe and it calls for pineapple chunks in it and pineapple juice. And what else? Um, you add some honey to get some sweetness. And it says passata. And I had a, a box of passata like that from the supermarket. And it, it called for 400 millilitres of, of passata. Probably be about the same. So I chucked the whole lot in. But as soon as I did it, I knew pet peeves. When, when I go for an Indian, when I have an Indian, big pet, pet peeve of mine is if it's too tomatoey. I tend not to go for for things that are very tomato-y, like, is it Boona? Um, I prefer a more sourish kind of, I, I like the taste of onions and garlic and all the smelly stuff and the spices, but I don't like too much tomato and this was a bit too tomato-y. I had to Google how to counteract the tomato and I ended up putting in some baking, I put baking powder in because it said you should put baking soda in and I didn't have any. And I also up the sweetness by putting some, I've got this honey that is, it's um, honey and chocolate. <laughs> Sounds a bit mental, but um, I think if you're in the UK, you might know it, you might have seen it in the supermarket. It's honey and cocoa powder. And it's a company called Rouse. And it's like this dark brown honey. It's chocolate and honey, literally nothing, nothing else added to it. It's literally just cocoa cocoa powder and honey and I thought I'd put some of that in there not a lot probably two big teaspoons and I made a, a big batch of it probably could have done with more it certainly didn't ruin it uh, but it's just a bit too tomatoey but I'm going to try it again I'm going to look up other recipes because it's good to cook food for yourself isn't it and I haven't done it for a while I haven't even been shopping for a while and I'm really really failing at adulthood despite my age. So I finally went shopping today, got food cooked from scratch. So that is in itself uh, a win. Hashtag winning. Hashtag winning at life. Uh, let me know what you are all wearing. I am naked. Right, let's see. Who do we have in the comments? Let's go back up. Um, Uh, Tracy says, embrace your fine self. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Jackie says, Mi Surrey. It's Surrey, isn't it? It's not Sussex. Duchess of Surrey is here. Uh, uh, Lizzie loves moths. Jackie loves moth by zoologist. That's a really interesting one. Uh, to me, it was, it was really interesting, but a bit too dirty. It was something quite almost obscene about it. Uh, Maddie says, good evening, Claire and all. I'm still doing bedtime with my girls, so may come and go. Good to see you, Maddie. Rich Mitch is here, he's driving. Well, don't be texting and driving, Rich Mitch. I think you know that by now. Lizzie says, midnight butterflies are just as beautiful with fluffy ears and black bean eyes. Okay, well, the bean bit's good. <laughs> But I think that, that there's, a, there's a time when I, I will flick the bean. <laughs> um, they're, they're fine if they stay still. Just stay still. Don't fly at me. Don't fly at my lights and stuff. I don't like it. Uh, drawn by is here. Hey, drawn by. Um, okay, with moths. Not sure about hairy spiders. I actually prefer spiders. And I don't love, I don't love spiders. Uh, little ones are fine. I'm happy to let them crawl on my hand and, and, and free them in the wind. From, But the bigger ones I'm not so keen on. Christy, I like moths, but I don't want them in my house for fear of them eating my clothes. Yeah, yeah that's not good. And she says, don't watch the movie Mothman. Prophecies, 
It sounds horrendous already. Uh, Christy O says, moths fly crazy and get in my hair, not a fan. Yep, he he. Rich Mitch is wearing Kazemi. Maddie's wearing La Reine de Fleurs from DSH Perfumes. Scott's wearing Missia on one arm, I guess, and Basilica on the other. Um, drawn by says, scent of the day was Narciso Rodriguez for, I can never say Rodriguez. I always say Rodriguez, Grez, Grez. Uh, he's wearing for him off of Narciso Rodriguez. Uh, but he checked, chucked on an Avon cheapie this evening. Uh, Jackie's wearing Dogma, Do, Doji, Dojima by Mono Di Oreo. Okay, I haven't heard of that one. I know Mono Di Oreo brand, but I haven't heard of that one. Uh, Christie's got Solstice Scents Rose Coffee Custard. Very nice. I think I've sampled that. Well, they're all lovely. The old um, Solstice Gourmands. Yum. Really good. Um... Right. Jackie says, Miss Year is so beautiful, Scott. Do you like it? Yep, I'm interested in Scott's take. It is a rose, so I think it's got a chance, but it might. I don't know how you, how you feel about the more um, sweeter, uh, uh, violety roses. Uh, Rose and Jones. Lizzie is wearing hers, Dabson. Uh, uh. Air d'absence, <laughs> hopefully I'm saying that right, from Louis Vuitton, something you'll hopefully sniff this evening. I've got a sample in here, so we'll, maybe we'll start with that now. Uh, Christy was wearing Chalamar Filtre de Parfum, but it's too hot, so I washed it off and put on Escada's Aquadel Sole instead, much more refreshing. Uh, and Scott does like Missia, but probably wouldn't wear it himself. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so I am completely naked. I just had a really quick shower whilst I was cooking dinner because multitasking. Um, luckily didn't burn anything or set fire to anything. So um, again, winning at life. So let's start off then. As I say, I'm completely naked. I have no perfume anywhere whatsoever. So I've got skin. Um, I think I'll save the skin until I've tested everything. So we'll start with Lizzie's samples as Lizzie's here now and I know she's busy baking. So uh, let's get Lizzie's samples done. So we'll start with her uh, Dabsons. <laughs> uh, Dabsons. That definitely wasn't right from Louis Vuitton. So this is one of those uh, high end Louis Vuittons. Are there any low end Louis Vuittons? I don't think there are, are there? I think they only do upper scale top not top notch top pra with le, i wouldn't say le but it's not is it earl earl stab and lizzie uh, has sellotape the lid on so let's remove that one and stick it down further out of the way um Lizzie says, excellent, looking forward to your thoughts. Yes, I'm currently baking cupcakes. You pronounce it better than me. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. Try not to get it on my finger so it doesn't confuse things later on. Right, I do not know the notes whatsoever. So this could be embarrassing if I completely mess up, but you know, I like to do I like to do this, um, I like to do stuff blind. I find it helps me to learn and get better, but it can also be embarrassing. But we're all friends here, so. Okay, what do I get? First of all, it's really pleasant. Um, it's clean. It's reminding me of a designer fragrance, something a bit more classic. What's it reminding me of? Daisy. It's reminding me of Daisy by Marc Jacobs. Lizzie, do you, do you know Daisy? Do you get the comparison? It's very, so it's very clean, but not exactly soapy. Almost like, oh, it's like Daisy now. I can't get that out of my head. 
It smells like Daisy. <laughs> oh, am I wrong? Tell me, uh, tell me I'm wrong. I don't even know what the notes are in Daisy anymore. I think there's a violet note. Um, so it does smell like a white floral. Um, do I get raspberry? Not exactly. It's not like a really, really kind of like, it's almost like smelling the suds, uh, soap suds a little bit. So it's got this clean feel to it. Slightly green, but not like in a, more like, dewy grass green a tiny bit um i don't know i wouldn't say it's aldehydic but you know how our aldehydes can give you that kind of like soapy clean feel i would say there's maybe violet in here and there's probably something like a jazz almost like a jasmine but nothing but uh, a jasmine that's had its balls cut off in that it's not, it's not a dirty jasmine. Um, it's almost like a green, almost like, almost leaning, maybe there's lily in here. You know how lily can be a little green. Um, I feel more like it's a jasmine. Or a magnolia I don't bloody know but it's it's um it's a gentle white floral almost laundry musk esque like if you if you were to sniff um a really nice laundry powder and it's you know it's called jasmine in the wind you know and it's 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 a it's a soft floaty kind of which is probably why I'm saying laundry detergent it's like yeah, it's reminding me of something else now. Now I'm saying daisies in a field. It, maybe the daisy connection again. Um, Jackie Christie, that's um, Christie's phonetical pronunciation. Uh, daisy says, never smelt daisy. Oh, blimey, that's probably £200 cheaper. I, we are... Daisy, oh so fresh twinkle. Actually, you need to try that because it's... Um, and B, it's got, it's definitely, I think, up your street. Um, what else do I get? I do get maybe like a Narcissus. It's making me think of daffodils a little bit. It's definitely floral, but very light in the air floral. So, yeah, it's making me think of daffodils. It's making me think of jasmine in the breeze. It's making me think a little bit of lily. I, I think that's really pretty but it doesn't smell expensive. It does, maybe that's just because it reminds me of Daisy. It probably deserves skin. So I think we're gonna go on skin because I definitely like it. Uh, so let's go, we're gonna go on the back of the left hand because when something's got uh, musks in it, it's good to get it on skin. Musk and iris really deserve to go on the skin to, to help them. Uh, push out and and come to life. So we have herb d'absence <laughs> on my left hand on the back of the hand. It does actually smell different. So it now smells like a, an irisy type perfume. Um, It feels a little bit like, you know, those irisy perfumes that kind of smell like a really expensive thick white lotion. It's like that. Um, uh, Lizzie says, it's all interesting. Totally get the link to laundry though on me. I always think of a delicate white rose and for some reason I get lychee in the opening. I don't know. Um, To me, it, I definitely get a hint of green in there, but not. Uh, it's, but the green's coming from a flower, so like a lily or, um, or a flower with the stems. You know, it's just gentle touch of green. Is it a rose perfume then? I, I don't feel like I'm picking up rose, but I, I don't always get rose. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. 
Uh, no, it's not Gdansk yet. We are on Erz Dabson from Louis Vuitton. Um, Elise is here. Hello, sorry to be late. What is being talked about at the moment? Yep, it's Herbs Dabson Louis Vuitton. Uh, I don't know the notes, but it smells like meadow flowers in a breeze with some laundry musk. <laughs> it's very pretty but it does remind me of Daisy by Marc Jacobs. And I think that, that that's where we'll leave that one. Um, yeah, so we're gonna move on to the next Lizzie sample. I think we'll save the special one from Peter till last. So the next one is Angel Nova, off of Thierry Mugler. Uh, Lizzie was interested in my opinion on this, uh, I think, he said I might actually like it. Um, I'm not an expert on the Angel range. I find the original Angel far too heavy on the patchouli. Um, I've, I've tried, I remember years ago trying Eau Sucre, which was quite nice, I guess because it's sugary. <laughs> I like sugary stuff. Um, but yeah, Angel Nova, we'll spray that on the paper first. I can smell it from I can smell it from here. It's it's obnoxiously fruity. <laughs> um, here we go. But obviously that's just <laughs> I was there. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, Liz! You knew I was going to hate this, didn't you? Okay, I don't hate it. Initially, when I smelt it, I thought, is that a shit ton of Ambroxan I'm getting or something something that I find offensive? And I think there is um, an, aroma, an aroma chemical or a concoction of aroma chemicals I personally find dry and scratchy. It's that kind of thing. Um, the Gourmand King is here. Hello. Uh, is, is it, it's barren, isn't it? Um, that one sounds good for a care, warm, carefree day. The... Um, uh, Louis Vuitton one. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful spring summer option. Um, yeah, I dislike this. Not in the way. I feel like I have to clarify. It's like this. It's a snobby side of me doesn't like it. It's not that I find the scent offensive or disgusting or bad. It's just this sort of cheap synthetic feel that means I couldn't tolerate it on myself. However, if I caught a whiff of someone walking by me, I would I would say, yes, they smell nice, you know, but um, it's just, it's very aroma chemically. I think I can get some of the patchouli in there. The, 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 if there's patchouli in there, it smells like there's a bit, but it's definitely, again, it's neutered. <laughs> um, it's definitely less patchouli than the OG Angel. Uh, there's a sourness in here. It's very, it's, it's a fruitchouli, and fruitchoulis are really not my thing. Uh, there's that bubblegum one that came out a year or so ago. Um, it's supposed to be, I can't remember who it's by now. I sampled it in the shop. It smelt like bubblegum for five minutes and then it was just a basic fruit chuli and it, it, I really didn't like that. So this is another one. It also it makes me think of another fruit chuli, which is um, what's that, uh, cheap one, Sophia Vergara. Yeah, I think it's the original Sophia Vergara scent, which is supposed to smell a bit like Chanel, Coco, Mademoiselle, and La Vie Abel crossed, but to me it, it didn't. Um, it, it just smelled like fruity patchouli. Um, yeah, this is horrible. I'm so sorry. Maybe on other people's skin. Uh, I'm not putting it on my skin, by the way. I'm not giving it the credit. <laughs> Liz, did you know I was going to have this reaction? This is awful. This is highly synthetic. I doubt there's one natural element to this at all. I bet, I bet there's nothing natural in here. Um, there's, 
there's this really sour off-putting note in there as well. So you've got the aroma chemicals, the dry scratchy stuff that annoys me. You've got this fruitiness. Then there's... Oh God, how do I describe it? There's something in here that's almost offensive. I don't know, that's really... <laughs> to my taste, it's really bad. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> um, Gourmon King sounds like a huge migraine. <laughs> this is horrific Nova. Do you, have you tried it, Johnny? If you are you agreeing with me? Oh, you're smelling it now, are you? <laughs> the glass bottle is natural, so there's that. Um, oh my God! Uh, yeah, uh, this is really awful. In in my humble opinion. <laughs> Is my opinion humble? It's, it's not that humble, is it? It's, it's a bit out. Uh, what's the word? It's a bit out there. Um, actually, I've um, I've tried Angel Muse, and I thought that was quite a nice uh, vanillic scent, like quite a really uh, quite a nice vanilla. Not not I wouldn't buy it, but I thought it was perfectly pleasant, more more than perfectly pleasant for a designer. It's actually quite good, uh, but this no. It's so aroma chemical. This is these are the aroma chemicals I hate. Uh, Elise is wearing a fruity today. Nia Jules Emad, lovely. Uh, Nova has something in it doesn't work on my skin. But I like the passion fruit note in Angel Muse. Also pink. <laughs> no, I, I can't. It's fruity. It's a little bit sour. But then it's like those, those scratchy aroma chemicals. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely not my taste. <laughs> um, Lizzie says, I know I'm mean, but I knew you'd hate it. Spot on reaction. Oh, it's brilliant that you, you know me so well. <laughs> Jackie says, poor Claire, stop torturing yourself and put the blotter down. I've not just put it down, Jackie. I've literally thrown it down. <laughs> John says, oh, no, I never want to smell it ever again. Claire. I'm so glad you agree with me on that. <laughs> oh that's funny um let's move on then to uh the centauri fragrance so uh, i didn't get to take part this i say i didn't get to, i didn't get around to taking part this time I've, I've taken part in all of the others um it's the um the competition that uh, peter from uh centauri does uh, i think he does it several times a year and he makes a one-off perfume in its own special bottle and then he raffles it for uh, Lizzie do you remember the charity is it the um the monkeys chimpanzee charity or is it a different one um if you can remember let me know so um he sent he sends every single penny to that charity so he's um his time, his materials, and all of the rest, the rest of it, he doesn't uh, get payment for. So it's, it's really, really generous of him to do it. And our very own Duchess of Surrey, Lizzie Bean, won this time around. It's called C5. Uh, Lizzie says, I'm not sure you'll enjoy the opening because you don't enjoy oud, but honestly, the dry down is amazing. Uh, the raffle was to raise money for Takis Shetter in Crete. What's the um, animals um, at Takis Shelter? Forgive me. Ah, good to see you, Barry. Um, uh, right then, so we're going to spray C5. Bearing in mind, I don't do oud, so um, um, so we know already the reaction will not be anything like the oh. I can smell it in the air and it's lovely. It's really spicy. Um, okay, right then. And I don't know the notes in here except oud now. Um, oh, did I say hello to Lily? I can't remember. But if I didn't, hello, Lily. Oh, that's nice. It's chocolatey. And it reminds me a little which I've got and I really enjoy. Yeah, it's really smooth. So the oud, 
if I if I'm picking up on the oud, and I really don't know if I am, but it's not walking down. So oud to me, oftentimes people say barnyard. I describe it slightly different, but almost in the same way. In that when you walk around country lanes and people are muck spreading, that's that smell in the air of muck spreading. Um, that makes me think of of, of natural oud. And obviously there's so many different varieties of oud. Oftentimes will take me to muck spreading. And I actually don't find that. It's not necessarily me. It's not necessarily what I seek out to wear. However, it doesn't offend me at all because it, it smells natural. Um, it doesn't necessarily smell of, of what it is. It is a, a, something that the tree grows to fight a disease, isn't it? It smells, but it smells of a walk in the country. Uh, so I don't mind that. Um, I find nothing offensive here and I don't actually get any muck spreading feel from it either. It has this mysterious feel. I think um, Liz's description sort of said it was like magical and um, I can't remember exactly what you said now. Oh, the oud is an accord apparently made by Rassai Fort. It's a very high quality smooth oud but Peter will know how to explain it better than me. It's lovely. So, um, okay. What am I getting? It's definitely got some spice. I, I, I'm not sure if it's a nut. It smells a bit like nutmeg. It might be a touch of cinnamon or maybe even a spice accord with a few different spices. Warm spices. It reminds me of dendera, which dendera smells to me like uh, baked. Also smells a little bit like pencil shape. But it's almost chocolatey. Very... Um, not in a real, like, true chocolate sense, but you know how patchouli can sometimes smell chocolatey? It's kind of like, a bit like that. I don't know if there's patchouli in here, and I don't know if, if there is, if that's what's making it so smooth and chocolatey. Maybe it's the oud. This could be like um, a batter for a spicy biscuit without much sugar, so it's not particularly sweet. Lots of patchouli, but it doesn't bother me at all. Um, what? makes it um, chocolatey then. Um, and Lizzie's thumbs up into the nutmeg. Yeah, I think the, the nutmeg, I really like nutmeg and the nutmeg is, is beautiful. It's very warm. I am going on skin. Wait, right, we're not there because that's the first one. So, well, what a treat. Thank you for sending me this sample, Lizzie. Um, yeah, you, you're, you're a lucky lady because this is really beautiful and you've got a one-off really special fragrance. When are you going to wear it? Is it going to be like a special occasion? You said it's really strong and, and you, you sprayed it in the kitchen and it lasted for days in the kitchen. Wow. Mm. Is there something like an absinthe for um, a licorice, star anise, something. I'm getting that from the opening now. Um, just a bit, just a hint. Something like star anise. Yeah, quite spicy. Almost gourmand. It's not gourmand, but it is almost gourmand because the spices are so delicious. I love that. Um, not sure when I wear it, but only one spray is needed, hoping it will last. I'm sure it will. Um, that's absolutely beautiful. I will come back to it because we've got it on, remember that, left hand, inner arm. I've got this weird... <laughs> oh, you can see it. This little thing. It used to be pale and now it's gone red. Anyway, strange. But that's where I sprayed it. I sprayed it just about where that weird little thing is. It's really beautiful. Well done, Lizzie. Well done, Peter. Amazing. Um, Lizzie says, we need a petition. Peter must recreate it for all. Yeah, I, I would, I would, based on how I feel right now, I will buy that. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so Rachel's here. Hello, Rachel. So we've done all Lizzie's samples and put those safely back in the, in the lovely purple pouch that she sent me. Um, the Angel Nova will... We'll go into the swap. 
into the swap giveaway throwaway slash pile <laughs> but um it was interesting to try it no we are just about to do Gdansk if I'm saying that right now so we're going to save the unboxing for the last thing um let me have a swig of my little drink that out the way right then so Gdansk Gdansk <laughs> it's a funny word isn't it um I don't want it, Claire Pet. I probably can't give it away. <laughs> Lily says, Nova is like those chain emails. Pass it on or there will be trouble. <laughs> you pass it on and you know damn well that the person you pass it to is going to be pissed off. Because, do you remember, it's been ages since I got one of those emails. It was almost like nearer the start of the internet when that used to happen. You get this email that said, you will be really lucky and win a, a big sum of money so long as you pass this email on to 99 of your bestest friends. <laughs> and if you don't, you will get bad luck or someone you love will die or something like that. Um, right, so here we go. Um, there is a little insert of uh, information that came with it. Uh, I must disclose this was sent to me by the lovely Nick of Gallivan, he was very kind, he sent me an email and asked if I'd like a sample, so um, he sent me one, which is very kind of him, and uh, it says inside, there, uh, it says a warm earthy smoky perfume, amber, the Baltic gold, the mystery of ambergris and the sea. Christy says I'm so excited to hear about good angst. So I'm really worried actually, because this is not going to be my cup of tea, I don't think, I could be wrong. Uh, I know that Nick makes a beautiful job of everything that he's involved in. However, <laughs> to have something that's about ambergris in the sea makes me nervous because I am not a fan of generally aquatic scents. And I, uh, I feel like aquatics generally rely on quite a lot of synthetics that I don't like as well. And then, of course, there's the notes. <laughs> which is quite a lot of notes in here I don't like as well. So I'll read you the notes. Plum, plum can be hit and miss for me. Honey, again, can be hit and miss. Cardamom, yeah, that's quite nice. Saffron, I really don't get on with saffron. Leather, generally don't enjoy leather unless it's very soft, more suede-like or very dialed down. Sandalwood, yeah, like that. Uh, can be... Sand, some sandwoods are a bit dry for me though. I quite like, I like the opulent, um, the, you know, the, the really, really good stuff, the Mysore, the rich stuff. Um, but generally sandalwood will never offend me. Patchouli, if it's too heavy, I, I won't like it. <laughs> Tobacco can be a little sickly for me as well, depends how it's done. Amber could be anything, um, and ambergris. I'm not sure if it's, if it's, real um my vegan friends if you're still here you, you may already know the answer to whether this is on your radar or not um so yeah let me know if you know yay or nay if the ambergris is real if anyone knows the answer to that um so we'll just spray it i think we'll spray it no there is a there is a scent to this card so we won't spray it to this card no scent to that, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really not expecting to like it, just based on the notes and um, the fact that it's kind of like about the sea. Um, it's just, uh, that's like, it's not my worst nightmare, but it's, it's up there. <laughs> but here we go. Nick said he is always happy to hear my opinion, regardless. Uh, he, he knows it's probably not for me, but yeah. Um, you guys will know that I will be completely honest. Um, I'm just letting it settle for a minute. I can smell the plum in the air actually. Lizzie says I love, I've discovered I love plum. Uh, David May is here. Hey David, how you doing? You still selling cars? Um, uh, Christy says I like some ambergris accords and not others. 
Uh, Lizzie says tobacco, plum and ambergris sounds, actually sounds good. Scott says definitely plummy. Um, yes, it's plummy. It's way nicer than I'm expecting <laughs> so far, so far, right? So um, let's see. I can smell in the background a little bit of something that I don't like, just a little bit. So I would say it's, I'm not sure if it's Amber Max or Ambroxin, but you, you know, it's kind of like dry woody aroma chemicals. I can smell a little bit of that in the background, but definitely got the plum mostly. Some cleanliness. Um, what's the cleanliness here? Oh, this is not dirty. I was I was thinking it might go dirty. Um, the saffron isn't that pronounced. If I mean, I, I don't think I can smell it at all. I wouldn't pick it out at the moment. It does have a bit too much of a certain aroma chemical for me, for my taste. Which might be part of that amber accord um, or the C accord. Uh, Christy says, I can't imagine at their price point that the ambergris would be real. Uh, Scott says, the opening is better than the dry down in my opinion. Jackie says, most of these notes appeal to me. Doesn't sound aquatic except for the ambergris. Yeah. I don't think I would call this aquatic at this point. The plum's gone quite quickly. Unless I'm just not noticing it anymore. But it's not as plummy as it was to start with. It's like it's, it's sat back quite quickly, the plum. Um, I mean, I'm examining it up close under the microscope here. I have a feeling uh, it would be way more pleasant just in the air, you know? I would say it does have that feel of a, of a blue perfume, you know, like um, a Bleu de Chanel type thing. So I guess it does feel a little aquatic but it's not as heavy on those synthetics. It's not as heavy on the aquatic notes as those type of perfumes are. That very, very popular genre of the, the blue bottle perfumes. Uh, I feel almost like there's a, a little spice in here. I don't think we've got any spices listed, have we? Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, what do we have? Saffron is a spice, I suppose, but it doesn't smell too saffron. It doesn't smell saffrony. <laughs> it has this clean, yeah, the plum's still there, but the plum's really gentle just add, it almost feel, feels maybe like the plum itself is slightly spiced. You know how um, you, you would, if you cooked plums and put them in a, in a, with a crumble or in a pudding, but it's not, don't get me wrong, it's not gourmand, but just imagine that it's just slightly spiced. If you can, if you know rosé all day from Gallagher and then, um, but massively reduce that down, the accord itself is, is, nothing like as it is in rosé all day like it's it's a tiny percentage of that it's of the whole thing it's it's a clean it's not soapy though how why is it clean to me it does it does smell clean doesn't feel like it it leans one way or the other in terms of masculine feminine at all but it does have a little bit of 
those aroma chemicals that I don't like. Which, whenever I see a perfume with an ambergris note listed, I always expect to get those kind of, or an amber note, or an amber, or, depends on the amber though. But if they're going for a more of a sea-like amber, rather than a, an amber uh, resin and vanilla accord, then I am always afraid, or actually even the amber resin vanilla accords sometimes contain some of those aroma chemicals that I don't like because they, they lend it that sort of um, dry, um, woody type feel. So it's, I, I find the notes, the notes don't necessarily tell you what you're getting. So we've got plum, honey, cardamom. Oh, cardamom's a spice, of course, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'd say the cardamom's quite, now, uh, yeah, cardamom's quite noticeable. Doesn't smell leathery at the moment. Doesn't smell heavy on the patchouli. Maybe it does smell a little. It's deepening up, so, um, already those mid notes are coming through actually. Leather sandalwood patchouli. I actually, I just said it doesn't smell leathery. But it does smell a bit leathery. But it's all very understated. There's nothing heavy here. It's light. So even though you've got quite heavy notes, I, I mean plum, honey, Saffron, the heavy notes, leather, sandalwood, patchouli, leather and, pa leather and patchouli, heavy notes. Tobacco can be quite heavy. There's a lightness here. And a cleanliness, and I think the cleanliness could be, sometimes if tobacco's done nice and light, if it's maybe a tobacco leaf, it, it can be nice and clean and smooth. Combine that with cardamom, you get that really smooth, kind of clean feel. Uh, some modern perfumes, uh, what you, is it La Nuit de Um have that kind of very smooth, clean feel. And it seems to come, I think, from the cardamom or tobacco. Um, I do think this would appeal more and more to men. Um, just because it does kind of, it's bringing to mind those kind of fragrances like La Nuit de the cardamom, tobacco. It's more reminiscent of a men's fragrances just because of that, but it doesn't smell manly at all. It's, it's definitely quite a clean scent. I think it's gonna be quite a mass appealing scent, more so to men than women, just because Typically, and I know, I know, don't shoot me, but uh, typically women do like things a little sweeter or a little more floral. This isn't this isn't a floral fragrance, and it's not that sweet. It's got some sweetness. So yeah, um, really interesting. Not as expected. Not my cup of tea, but a pleasant surprise. It's way better than I thought it would be. I honestly think if this was in a mainstream bottle, it would sell very, very well. It's like a classy, understated take on a on an aquatic scent. Penhaligons could could sell this. Saying that the late <laughs> the latest fragrances from Pen Penhaligons are really not my thing, um, but um, go, I'm going back in time um, to when Penhaligons were good. And yeah, they, they, they could bottle this and sell it. Um, it's, it's pretty classy, understated, very nicely done. Everything's done with a subtle hand and that's what I like. Um, so even though, yes, there is an element to it that I find slightly not for me, um, it's all done with a light touch and it's, it's very, um, very nicely done, I would say. So tailored, that's, that's I think why I thought of Penhaligons because I was thinking of, not that it smells like, but I was thinking of sartorial, I was thinking tailored, I was thinking classy, understated, tailored, 
so I think if you're someone who's not into niche, if you're a gentleman, you're not, you're not really getting into niche just yet, this could be that stepping stone if you like some of the um, fresher aquatic scents, then I think you could definitely get along with, good thanks, <laughs> if I'm saying that right, I hope that I am. So that was a good thanks to first impressions. Have, um, has any of you tried it? I know uh, Scott did, uh, Scott liked it. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna scroll back up. Uh, actually, I need a swig of my drink. Oh. Sounded like someone was out there. Right. Um, that's not me. Uh, Rachel says, the unusual take on amber is fantastic. Fantastic, in my humble opinion. Um, uh, David, good memory, Claire. Yes, still selling, not delivering many though. Long wait times. Oh yeah, I know there's a bit of an issue, isn't there, at the moment, or has been for a little while. Um, uh, Christy says, Amber Max, Amber Extreme, really bother me. Yes, um, me too. Uh, Lily got some spice too, cinnamon I think, okay, yeah, I felt like there was some spice in there. Uh, Maddie says, I believe that Galavan are 100% vegan, so the ambergris will be an accord. Um, Channel 69 is here, hello, good to see you. Um, Lily says, it felt aromatic to me at times. Um, Jackie says, Nick's such a good perfumer that I'm still curious, but none, none of how it sounds sets me on fire. No, okay. Uh, John says, it was a bit sweet for me. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't think it was that sweet, but maybe it's the richness of the plum. It's a bit sweet. Yeah, that plum feels like it's come back a bit, like it's, it's a bit stronger. Definitely feels a bit spicy. Um, yeah. Okay, that's so. That is good. Dank. So, what have we got left? We've got something exciting. <laughs> so, now we've got an unboxing. Uh, I don't know if I brought my scissors over. So, I could either attempt it without them. It's from Nottino. So, that now rules out uh, Lizzie's guess and Elysia's guess on Facebook as well. What do you think is in the box? Some of you know, Tracy, if you're still here, I know you know, there you are, Tracy. I'm enjoying a mega pint of wine. <laughs> oh, come on, who else is obsessed with the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial? Honestly, it's getting in the way of me living my life. Um, yesterday I had motivation issues. I, I actually managed to put my cycling shorts on with a padded bottom and I was almost going to go out on a bike ride and I started watching the trial and I never made it. I, I also had a list of to-dos, a to-do list, nothing got done. Literally spent yesterday watching the Amber Heard trial and other videos about the Amber Heard trial. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I am unboxing. Um, I've managed to find a, a bit of sellotape that I could... Um, so yeah, it, that that's the uh, Tracy's reference to Mega Pint. If um, if for those of you who haven't been watching it, so um, one of Amber Heard's lawyers said to Johnny Depp something along the lines of, "You had poured yourself uh, a large drink, hadn't you? You had poured yourself a Mega Pint," and Johnny Depp goes, "Mega Pint." <laughs> But he kind of like smile, you know, he found it amusing that this lawyer is, is obviously trying to exaggerate how much uh, he was drinking. So obviously 
an intelligent lawyer would know that a pint is a pint. You can't put more in a pint than a pint. A pint is a pint. But he said to him, a mega pint. <laughs> it's so funny. But I am trying to do this. Uh, John says, Galan, no. Uh, Uh, it's 200 mils of Nova. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, Lizzie says, my YouTube is flooded with Johnny and Amber. So I, I'm watching, but also I'm trying not to. It's a proper mess. She's vile. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I had a, a little discussion on it on my last live. Uh, I'm sure he's not the easiest person to live with either. Uh, with the drinking and drugs and stuff but it does look like she is the aggressor most of the time if not all of the time um uh yeah i find it fascinating that he was putting up all of her friends and family for free um and this is all these fucking hangers on using him i i feel sorry for him that he got so used and um yeah Right, we are open. I'm gonna pull it out of the box. Anyone? No one's guessed it yet. I don't think. Um, um, Jackie says puff on to Marley. Nope. <laughs> I'll have a mega pint. Needs to be a t-shirt sold outside of the courthouse. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also something to do with the Amica cream. <laughs> I think um, I'm going to I've been meaning to make a video and just put a ton of clips from the court case in it just because that will make me happy so I might do that <laughs> right any guesses on money privé something says Scott no um, I did mention it in my video that I did when I went to London looks like they sent me some a sample or two so Savage Elixir <laughs> John, no. Oh, this, yeah. Oh, actually, did I get to? I think I got to click on on some free samples, and uh, they've given me some Lancome a uh, little mini foundation there. So that's nice. We've got um, Boss Alive. I just smelt that from the lid today in boots, and I smelt the aroma chemicals that I hate just from the lid. So that's not going to do. That's not going to fare well. Um, Boss Bottled, Hugo Boss Bottled, Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. Uh, I've never found a Boss that I liked, so, um, and then we've got Boss The Scent, I think that's the men's one, Boss The Scent, so, yep. Oh, yeah, I remember asking for this one, actually, it's Eternity Eau de Parfum, so, um, Let's get rid of the box. He used to wear this as a, as a young, late teens, early 20s. Um, so I'm going to smell it, because I literally haven't smelt it in years. Sp spray it in there. That's, yeah, that's kind of how I remember it. Not quite, not exactly how I remember it. But it's pretty close to what I remember. I'm guessing it must have gone through several reformulations based on the way that the rules change. So it's never gonna smell exactly how I remember it. But it's fairly close. It's a little soapier than I remember. It's smoother. I remember it being a little more punchy. It's got a lot of notes from memory. It's, um, I think it's like a violet, white floral. I don't know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear it for nostalgia reasons. Because it's still good. It's a good fragrance. Eternity for women. Like, I think it's, um, because it's so old, people don't really pay any attention. But it's good. It's, it's a lot better than a lot of the, the shit they keep coming out with at the moment. Right, 
Anyone guessing yet? Right. <laughs> um, uh, Rachel says Dior. Nope, she's not a Dior. So, do you want me just to tell you? Let me have a swig. Uh, oh, I won't tell you. I'll just reveal it. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Jimmy Choo. Nope. It was um, from defamation to defecation. <laughs> well, it, I think it went from defecation to defamation, didn't it? So it's a different order. <laughs> but do you know what? It was the poo that got me into it. <laughs> because um, cause I'm so childish and poo is one of my favourite words. And also the favourite thing that I draw, if I'm doodling, it's always going to be a poo with little lines of, of smell above it. Um, and when I started seeing the memes and, and the stuff going around about uh, her allegedly pooing in the bed, um, I was like, I was intrigued. I just had to find out what was going on. And now I will never get my, I will never get these hours of my life back. So, antique vanilla, definitely not. Right, um, I'm going to show you because... Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. This is just such an impulsive thing to do. Because I only, I've only tried this on my skin once. And um, I never had a sample. And I don't even 100% know for sure that the bit of my skin that I thought this was, I don't 100% know if this was this, I'm pretty sure it was, <laughs> but, uh, so it's called Wish Come True, and it's Stefan Humbert Lucas, so yeah, when I went to London, I tried this one on this wrist, hopefully, and I had the other um, from this brand called Lady White Snake, which is one of their newer, I think it's their most recent release, had Lady White Snake on this wrist, and I really fell in love with this one. Uh, Elisa says, Eternity is what the trendy older girls at my school used to wear. Right, so let's, um, let's undo it. And so I got it from Notino, it's a little cheaper than RRP. Uh, I think I paid about, with, with parking, not parking, shipping. With shipping, uh, it was about 140, 144, so it's quite a lot for something I'm not that confident about. Uh, Lizzie says, I'm guilty for missing your last video because I've not heard of that one, love the name of it. Um, I'm the same actually, you posted a video and I haven't got around to watching it, so I do, but it's because I'm, I'm not watching anything except the Amber Turd stuff. <laughs> right then, so let's have a look at the presentation. So, yeah, you've got that. It's a slidey, slidey draw type situation. So, we'll pull that off. Uh, there we go. So, that's going to lift up. <gasps> oh my gosh! Look at that! So that's the box, you can go on the floor. Who loves this bottle? So it's not, it looks a bit dirty, it looks like it's, let's give it a little. It's not um, the kind of bottle that shows up well on camera, because, but let me explain it to you. The writing is etched into the plaque and then it's inside the writing you've got sparkly blue on the big writing and then you've got uh, that edging is etched in as well and then you've got a, a lovely uh, flat blue like non-sparkly blue in there um, and then the lid is <laughs> ribbed for her pleasure. Uh, you see the rib, the ribbed, <laughs> it's almost like a honeycomb thing. Um, you've got SHL, Stefan Humbert Lucas, just, uh, just there. 
So yeah, and then at the back, nothing. So yeah, actually there's a, there's a slight flaw, which is maybe why Notino got hold of it in, in there, on the back of this plaque at the front is clearly a flaw. So I wonder if that's why it was at Notino. It probably didn't quite um, make the cut. So shall we spray it? So we'll go over here because there's nothing on this hand or arm. I wonder if it will spray straight away or if it'll be, no, nope. right, so it's never been sprayed before. So it's definitely, uh, definitely brand new. Um, uh, Tracy says, in my head I called it Wish Upon a Star. Lots of people saying beautiful, stunning. One of the nicest bottles I've seen lately, says Christy. And Jackie says, yes, please spray. <laughs> yeah, this is the right one. So what I got nervous about is um, our friend Jimbo, who's not here uh, this evening, unfortunately, um, but we all know our friend Jimbo. And when I was in the process of ordering this and slightly umming and ahhing, and I went to Fragrantica and our mate Jim had left a review and he'd said something like, Is, it feels like there's cumin in here. I get that. I think he's saying he gets sort of like that body odor cumin type feel. So I got really nervous because I might have missed it because obviously I was in Harrods, I was in Harvey Nichols, I was spraying all sorts of stuff. So there's a good chance that a chunk of time went by without me smelling it. And I thought, well, what if there's a cumin note in here that I just didn't spot? And I don't really like cumin, but so far, so good. No, I think there is actually. <laughs> I think Jim's right. I don't know if there, it officially is. I don't think there's a listed note, but I think Jim's right. I think there's a little bit of something like cumin, um, but not to a degree at the moment that's bothering me at all. Uh, but I think he's right. I do think there's cumin in here. <laughs> um, right, let me go for let me go for a Grantica and find the old notes because. So, so to me, it smells uh, powdery, dusty, a little sweet, a little bit like um, Lizzie's um, recently smelled, the Amani Privé New York. It feels like it has some similar things to that. It's not the same, it's definitely edgier, um, it's not as smooth. It's not as friendly, it's, it, it's definitely got a challenge to it. Um, but it smells kind of like violet, maybe white flowers, I'm not sure. But there is that, something like cumin that I hadn't picked up on before. <laughs> but it's not, it's not that strong. I wish, calm wish come true yeah it's like um it's a powdery violet is it fruity little fruity let's see what do we have here oh it is it's vanilla right hang on hang on a minute let's see what we've got here ylang ylang tangerine bergamot incense labdanum jasmine vanilla ambergris tuberose and musk so the note listing to me sounds amazing. I love every single note there. Um, let's see if I can pick anything out. I know a lot of the a lot of the reviews on Fragrantica mentioned the tangerine being quite strong. Yeah, so it is it's orangey, a little bit orangey. I feel like there's a, a little smoke, a little spice. It definitely feels like a, a sweet floral incense with this edge. I can smell the vanilla. The vanilla is definitely lending it quite a lot, a lot of its sweetness, I think. But it's not just predominantly uh, vanilla. It's not 
a vanilla fragrance in my opinion it's a fragrance that has a, a reasonable amount of vanilla but it's not at no point when I tried it before did it ever become just a vanilla scent like so many fragrances oftentimes um, designer scents in particular every, everything can fall away and just leave the vanilla in situ uh, it never did that it always felt like there was some smoke and some mystery and and you know some spice and and things that make you think it is almost like that it is like that Armani Privé but um uh, imagine Armani Privé was created for Victoria Beckham in her most poshest outfit. And then imagine that it had to be reconstructed for Kate Moss when she was behaving badly in leather. This is, this is Kate Moss's leather one, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Even though they don't share that many notes in common. But that's how it feels to me. Yeah, I would say there is cumin in here, but it it is it, it's only small. It's only a little. But mostly, it's like a sweet floral incense vanilla. But it really lasted on my skin. It's definitely really strong. So I am going to make it my scent of the night. I don't know whether this is going to be something I will end up craving. I'm only going to do a couple of sprays because it is quite strong. Um, is it going to be something I'm going to end up like really craving and falling in love with and wearing loads of? Or is it going to be more occasional? I have a feeling it's going to be a little more occasional because it's not, it's not that simple and easy. It's much more, out of everything I've got, it's definitely got a bit more of an edge than the average fragrance. So if you said um, Oriana from Parfums de Mali, that's super mass appealing, easy peasy, Japanesey, that's like over here. Um, and if you go for something a little uh, less easy peasy, Japanesey, I would say tobacco rose for me would, would come more over here. It's like I don't wear it that often because it's not so sweet and so um, it's not suitable for all occasions. It's not as versatile. And then I would say that this new one, Wish Come True, would just come a little further over this direction. And then like, you, if you wanted to go like my most challenging fragrances and they don't really get that challenging to be fair um let's think what have I got this bit more challenging I don't even know I don't even know what's more challenging I've got a decant of Anubis from um Papillon and I'd say that's a bit more challenging so it's got that um quite sort of strong leather note to it so I would put Anubis further over here so it would come between tobacco rose and Anubis in terms of easiness and versatility and you know mass appealingness and stuff. Um, but it it is I'd say I've tried most from this brand, but only in the shop, only in Harrods. So I don't know them very well. Oh, I did have a sample, or I have got a sample of Pantheon Iris, and that's quite nice. But it definitely still has a bit of an edge. The Lady White Snake, really, really nice. Definitely has a bit of an edge. This, um, it's got a white leather note, and you definitely do smell. To it made me think of snake skin, probably because the name conjured that up for me, Lady White Snake. But the leather note did bring to mind a snake skin. So it's not like a super harsh, um, I don't know, riding um, horse riding leather stuff, and it's not new car leather. It, it was almost like a snakeskin handbag kind of leather and it wasn't too strong but it was just a bit on the edgy side for me just a little bit so let me just check up if we have any comments um no not the cumin i would be nervous too <laughs> yeah um accidental cumin accord 
Um, I love a bad Kate Moss, says Jackie. A nice edge of cumin doesn't sound too bad, says John. White liver, interesting, I wonder how that smells. Um, yeah. I'm really happy with that. I would say the cumin's fading already, I think. Doesn't smell out as noticeable to me now. It's got, it hasn't got a violet note. It really makes me think of violet, you know. Yes, yeah, it does smell a little bit like Palma violets. Uh, which is weird because there's no violet here. Can I, I, I don't feel like I can pick up on tuberose. I wouldn't specifically pick out jasmine. It, it, you can kind of tell it's a white floral, but it is, there's nothing, no specific flower that is jumping out to me. It's just got, it's weird because it has got this sweet, it's quite strong sweetness and you can still get the cumin. So imagine like sweet vanilla and some cumin. If, if for those of you who don't know cumin, it's a uh, spice that you put in curries usually, but it can, it smells a little body odor like, and I'd say it also smells a bit but like onion burgers, you know, <laughs> you know, people say burger breath. <laughs> um, it's, you know when you smell uh, uh, cheap burgers being cooked with fried onions on, on the grill, you know, if you, if you, um, you go down the high street and there's like a, a burger stall, like a, one of those movable, a burger van or something, you can smell the fried onions cooking. I think cumin can kind of come off a little like that. And um, yeah, it's, but it's very gentle in here. It's not that strong. Thank God. I don't think anyone's going to smell me and, and say, have you washed, have you got deodorant on? I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. It's, it's probably not even going to be picked up in the air. It's just up close, I reckon. Yeah, it's got, it's a really lovely, in the air, it's, it's got this lovely powdery sweetness. And it does, makes me think of iris and violet. It's like a really lovely, finely milled sort of powder and then this sweetness and it's very gentle white flower accord. And incense. But incense is like um, wisps of incense smoke through everything else. So it's not a dominant thing. It's just... Uh, wisping across everything in a really gentle way. Ten tendrils of gentle smoke from incense. Really, really nice, really interesting. Um, yeah, I do recommend, uh, if it sounds interesting to you, definitely do try to check it out. Difficult to get samples, so I don't know how you go about that, um, which is really annoying because I like to sample stuff and I like to tell everyone else to sample stuff if they can. Um, you can obviously find it in major stores, I think, but I say major. You can find it in Harrods. You can probably find it if you look hard enough in different places, but I don't think it's particularly widely spread. So it's a bit of a pain to, to actually get to sample it. Uh, the only fragrance I've appreciated cumin in so far is Madeline from Mars Milano. Cumin can definitely be hit and miss. Yeah, um, agree. I like, oh dear, I'm belching. Um, I like Madeline as well. And the only time, I only, s the fuck is that, stupid car. Um, the only time I smelt cumin in Madeline was once, uh, early, early on when I sampled it, I, um, I remembered it was in there and I found it in like I found it in there when I was smelling it quite I think it's like in the opening notes more so than later since then I mean, I've got um, a travel size I've spread I've worn it quite a few times I've never really picked up on that um, cumin note since so it's weird isn't it has anyone else ever experienced that where you pick up on a scent 
a note in a fragrance you smell it you know you you smell it you know it's there and then you never ever notice it again it's really strange um Jackie says, has such a delicious, meaty, smoky flavour. Yum. Uh, what are we talking about? Cumin. <laughs> um. Oh, okay, we're talking about food. <laughs> yeah, I've, I put a lot of cumin, or well, I put some cumin in my Danzac tonight. Like It called for one teaspoon, and I did stick to the plan with the one teaspoon because I didn't want it to take over. But there was loads of other spices as well. Um. So yeah, and they do have samples at Lucky Scent. Okay, so you can try it if you go to Lucky Scent. Um, uh, Rachel says, so enjoying this live, must run to help my toddler. Well, lovely to have you, Rachel. I, I'm not, I'm pretty much done now. <laughs> um, Jackie says, one of Claire's neighbours thinks he's at Speedway. I know, shocking, shocking uh, behaviour out there. Um, um uh, John, my curry was good. It wasn't it? Wasn't the Danzac I wanted it to be? <laughs> um, and I'm really I'm fussy with perfume and I'm fussy with with curry. In that uh, I really like my Danzac to be hot and spicy and sweet. And I feel like mine was too tomatoey far too tomato-y, my fault, I put too much tomato in it, uh, um, and apart from that it was pretty good, it was too saucy so I had to cook it for ages to get the sauce to reduce, uh, it was like, Danzac should be really saucy, and we all like it a bit saucy now don't we, Danzac should be really saucy but this was like a, a bit too watery saucy, it was far too, um, Far too watery, saucy, and far too tomatoey. So, but it was my first go, and I'm pleased with myself for a going shopping and buying the ingredients because to me that's a win. Because I, <laughs> I've just been, <laughs> I just haven't been able to get my ass into gear to do anything good that I should be doing. So um, I did well to look up a recipe, go and get the ingredients, and cook cook myself a meal from scratch. So um, I did well, and it's it's very tasty. It's very nice. It's just slightly too tomatoey, and not quite the sweet and sour experience that I wanted. I think next time I might put some marmalade or jam or something in there to get the sweetness up and to get like that sticky, rich sort of fruitiness, um, and less, far less tomato. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, John says, well, I'll let you practice more before I try your curry. It's, it's perfectly pleasant. Um, it's better than a microwave meal. Oh, I don't know, Marks and Spencer's do quite good microwave curries. Um, okay, I, I think I'm done. I've done the unboxing, I've done good angst, and I've, got, I've done Lizzie's samples. So I am going to sign off and watch some more Amber Heard and Johnny Depp stuff. Um Although I should probably go to bed fairly soon. Thank you everyone for watching. It's been a pleasure. And I will see you all very, very soon.